Opinions, viewpoints, and beliefs presented on this program do not necessarily reflect those of the management, the affiliates, and broadcast partners, or the sponsors. Listener discretion is advised. Scarefest Radio, the radio you can see. And hello and good evening, everyone, and welcome to Scarefest TV. Brandon Griffiths is, is already behind the scenes bitching about money he spent like five years ago. So this is just going to go off the rails, off the rails tonight. Hello, everyone. Six years the original. ago, and I remember it like it was yesterday. Working off the, uh, the sofa van. Yeah. The original broadcast date, June 2nd. This is our council meeting, and I just want to say that, look, I've got the wild hair. Oh, she's in front of Brandon with the big sack. Let's see. If I no, it's her. probably better for everybody. No, I really just put, I'd like to be about this big up in the I corner, please. It all fixed no, 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 just no. There we go. Oh, and no. I'll, it'd just be my little head in front of her chin now. It'll, it'll look That's all good. cute. Live production, everybody. Live production. I am here, of course, despite the universe's best efforts to kill my ass. <laughs> uh, Fair enough. So, anyway. Um, we're just going to talk about the shit that's going on. Uh, we, uh, we were this close. Everybody can shut up about it. We're this close to posting photo ops. We almost had them. Um, uh, and then they actually got some up that we can't sell yet. So we got to yeah. fix that. I mean, my God, we can put them up, but like what's going to happen is, is that as soon as we put them up, we're going to finalize two more things and then you'll just have to upgrade them. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. This is to your benefit, I promise. And, and it's still, even if we don't release them until next month, which isn't going to happen, but even if we waited a month, we'd probably still be earlier than the last couple of years. I can't remember when we launched last year, but it wasn't in June, I don't think. Now, you, it used to be in like October or yeah. September. It used to be like 30 days out, and everybody was already out of money. By the way, before we get started, everybody, I want to give a shout-out to Jake Godbold. He sent me a Stop Trying to Kill Yourself card, uh, <laughs> as opposed to the normal Get Well card. And uh, so Jake, shout-out to you, but yes, it was very cute. I enjoyed it thoroughly, but yeah, basically says Stop Being Such a Calamity. Um, because this <laughs> this is the third attempt on my life this year. No, I've already taken out an insurance policy on you. It's a yeah, smart too. thing to do. Smart thing to do. I'm going to yep. tell you. Uh, but you're, you're going to fund the next five years of Scarefest. You don't even know I, that. I'm <laughs> glad I could be a part of it. I'm, just, I'm honored. I am honored to be a part of it. Um, so anyway, how how are the... How's things going, Brandon? How's the planning going? What do we got left? Uh, Why are you asking Brandon? Well, yeah. because he's the figurehead. You're the head. Adrian's in the, Adrian's in the driver's July, seat on this. August, September, October. We got five like months. Basically, win? it's five months. The people in the chat room want to know. Yeah, I mean, okay. Well, <laughs> so, the, so there's, there's, there's three big pushes right now that we're working on. And that is to finalize uh, celebrity stuff because I don't know if you guys have noticed or not. Um, we have really retooled our budget to focus on being able to bring in more folks. And so this year you're going to see a lot of people like we're not going to peter out, you know, around 50. It's going to be more than that. Uh, because we basically reworked a few things. Did you just fucking say peter out around 50? Yeah, that's an Eastern Kentucky thing. I could say no, that. I don't mean that part. I mean 50. I mean, who are we competing against? The fucking Met? I mean, you know. <laughs> no, we're going. Jeez. This is 15 years, and so we're going big. Okay. Uh, 
And so, and, and the caliber of folks that we're bringing in, I think are, are extraordinary. And so that's, that's, you know, that's the big thing on, on that end, you know, and Adrian has done a, a just an amazing job this year. Um, I mean, I can't say enough. And, you know, the second thing that we're, we're really focused on is obviously the photo ops and like, you know, all these, these groupings that we focus on and these cast reunions and things um, that we've been really big on the last couple of years. Um, I mean, that's going to be huge this year. And, and, and I was actually making graphics for it and I'm just getting all, all tingly. Um, the, the, the hardest thing is, is like holding back on people that we know that are coming. Um, that, that, that's the hardest thing that we, we get into. Like some of the pairings I'm, I'm really excited about this year. And I've told you guys about my day of the dead, like <clears throat> fascination and, you know, that, you know, all that kind of thing. But I mean, we've got, you know, sleepaway camp 40 years. We've got, I think we've got one more announcement on that tonight, which I'm really stoked about. Uh, I got to see all those folks in, in Texas this last weekend and that was an amazing show and, and you know Felissa absconded with my daughter again and <laughs> held her at the table and gave her sweets. As it should be. Yeah, yeah. Uh, one thing I did realize during that whole thing was that my daughter has began slowly to start dressing like me. Like, <laughs> I noticed hand. that in some of the pictures you sent <laughs> Yeah, odd hats, flannel shirts. Like she went through apprentice coordination in medieval times in a uh, in a horror shirt with like bass on it and flannel. Like she was wearing it at one point, like buttoned all the way up. And then she had like a mix of like and the and the vendors out there were really cool too. And like people recognized us and and which is a weird feeling in and of itself. Um, but like she she had on her jean vest, you know, that RA and everybody had signed. And, you know, Felissa and, and everybody interacted with her and like, and so anyway, she, she had on like this weird ensemble of like a, like a lollipop and butterfly headband <laughs> and like a Pokemon backpack <laughs> and her horror vest and then her flannel shirt uh, and then a, like a, like a jumper underneath of it. Oh, and she had her little tiara with the long, um, like the tool like uh train thing that held off oh, of it. oh yeah like, we, we we got i i love medieval times and like i was telling like samantha osborne on facebook you know i'm kind of a renaissance snob like i'm, I'm I, I love medieval times like i can't i can't get enough of it and i haven't been in a long time this is the first place i was like holy crap it's like five minutes away i was like we're gonna do this and we're gonna do it right and get the princess coronation which is yep. well worth you know the 20 bucks did they give you one as well? Did you have a princess coronation? No, I did not realize. And, and if I had it to over with, oh, good job. That's awesome. That is an excellent possum drawing. So Nicole's birthday is tomorrow. And we are working on a birthday card. Nice. And she's actually... Uh, that is phenomenal. Yeah, yeah. She doesn't get. She's creative. gonna love she, that. It's like a reveal. Yeah, yeah. She's mom. yeah. Mom can see that. You gotta hide it. <laughs> mom, don't mom, watch mom, it. mom occasionally it. watches the show. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Good job. So anyway, uh, okay. So, tell, tell me something about Texas. Photo, I don't photo know. ops are the other big thing. Photo ops and entertainment. Those are celebrities. Photo ops and entertainment are the biggest things that we've got to dive to right now and and so that's what we're that's what that's the three big things that we're focused on right now i want to know how the how the uh how how texas went moving from a hotel setting to a uh, actual convention center how did they translate you know and and i love that show like i i've yeah. it's the same year i've gone and i really enjoy it and i think that they made an excellent call by transitioning to a hotel from a hotel to a convention center because they just outgrown their venue. I mean, I think. Oh yeah, it was. Cool. Yeah. And and this year though, like so last year, you know, it was like, you know, walking around like 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 this. Literally. And that that gives me anxiety. This year wasn't the case. Good. You know, it was a lot roomier. People were spaced out. Like it had like three floors, I think. Uh, the second floor was just 
it was smaller and it had like food and like the third floor was where like uh, carpenter and like some of those things were going on. So it, it was spaced out pretty well. Um, so I mean, they, they picked a good time to do it. They picked an excellent venue. Um, it was really easy to get in and out of. Um, when I got down there, and this is nothing against them, uh, when I got down there, there was no parking within like a mile radius. And I was like, holy shit, this thing's crazy. And then I realized uh, that Bush was playing across the street <laughs> with uh, like three days grace or something like that. I, I, I don't know any of you 90s music fans out there. Yeah. So, so I, I got in an elevator with a bunch of the Bush fans, and they were like, why are all these people dressed up? And I had to explain it to them. So then it made a lot more sense. But yeah. So Well, that's not, cool. I bet they, was that Friday? Yeah, yeah. I bet they got some people that went to that concert to go over to uh, Frightmare, because that's like, uh, I could God, see some that elevator, man. The people in that elevator were appalled that I had my daughter with me taking her to like <laughs> such an event. I got some scowls and cross bullets. It was kind of Did weird. you tell them that she is a, the horror princess? Well, I mean, she had on a friggin', you know, jean vest with a bunch of, like, serial killers all over it. Good, good. And all that. But I tell you what, one thing funny about that vest and, and, and being there, like, when we were standing in line, um, every line that we got in, even when we were walking down the hall and stuff, like, people would look at her jacket and you can see where like RA like had written Scarefest on there, and that would just automatically spark a conversation. And so that 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 initiated a lot of talks that I had. And I, and of course, I mean, I, I never go to other people's shows and try to recruit or anything like that. No. That's just for fun. Uh, but if somebody asks me about my show, I mean, obviously, I'm going to talk about it. <laughs> oh yeah. Awesome. All right. Th this is a good moment to go to a commercial break. Everybody, we'll be back in 60 seconds. Horror. Movie. Fan. Four. Life. On Facebook. Find us. Four watch parties. Four news. Four memes. Four friends. Four life. Horror movie fans for life. Join us. I don't even know what he's talking about. Everybody. Welcome back to Scarefest TV. Okay, so uh, Brandon's back from Texas. Now, of course, now this weekend, we take off and uh, go to Fandom. Uh, uh, Frankie. Frankie. Frankie Con. Con. That's it. Yep. Uh, Frankie Con. So, um, so you're just like not home a lot lately, are you? No, no. Um, and actually, like, you know, work's been crazy all around, but like I have... You know, it's been nice to be able to go to, I, I love going to shows and I haven't done it as much as I want to. And so I was actually last night, like making out my list for the rest of the year. And I'm really excited about FrankenCon this year. I mean, those are, this is those guys like second voyage out. Um, and I think they've made a lot of really good decisions. And I think that the show is going to be really good. Um, so I'm really looking forward to that trip. And of course, like, you know, all the folks that are there, it's always a good time. Um, but yeah, I mean, some of the other shows, like I, I posted last night when I was taking a break from like answering emails and stuff, I've got my wish list for the rest of the year of where I want to go. Oh, Frank I saw that. FrankenCon will be my first convention of the year. I'm so excited to go to FrankenCon. I think, um, I think I saw one of the guys in the chat a little bit ago, but they were logged in under FrankenCon, so I don't know which one of them it was, but... Hi, Frank and Con guys. Hey, Wes, I can't put you on the traveling rotation again. I mean, Jesus Christ, I'm not getting on a plane with you. 
Hell no. Well, you got her. No, you would. You you shit down both legs because I never actually die. It's just it's always like a close call. And I saw you when we landed the plane last uh, last year, uh, coming back from Texas. That everybody, oh. what I'm talking about, that last. It was windy when we got back to the airport, and so the pilot made a good ju- made a judgment call that when he got like a hundred foot from, from the ground, he just folded the wings in and let the plane drop. And uh, <laughs> if we, we, we hit turbulence outside Dallas, and and if Starlet hadn't been sitting right beside me, I mean, it was like like Final Destination level turbulence, like where where crap was like falling out, <laughs> and like. I, I, I literally like and, and Scarlett like just didn't skip a beat. I guess because she's driven in the car enough with like me and Nicole that like she doesn't worry about stuff like that. But like stuff started falling out and I was like, yeah, yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty rough. Uh, I'm not gonna lie, I was pretty scared. Yeah, it was. A, Is she just I did, sitting there like, yeah. No, she just this? bop, be bopping along. Yeah. Oh my God. I just That's know great. that uh, I just know with what we encountered last year, <laughs> your face was this color. I I, looked, I turned around very quickly. It, and said, I got to see this. I got to see this. And sure enough, it, it, it's like that that line from Superman Returns or whatever it was with Brandon uh, Ralph. It's like technically, it's still uh, statistically the safest way to travel. <laughs> That's fine. I get that, but like. I don't know. I like having my my own fate in my hands. It's a control thing, I, I think. And if my car like you know jostles around, I'm three foot off the ground. Yeah, that's that. That was always my thing. I, I mean, I'm not. I once I finally flew, I had no trouble with it. But that was always a little voice in the back of my head. Um, you hear about lots of survivors in car wrecks. Oh, me and Scarlett almost missed the flight back, by the way, which would 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 really. I still have the key to my rental car. Oops. Yeah, it happened. She wanted to go to the pool at like 11 o'clock at night. Did do it. Times and she went scuba diving in the hot tub. Uh, and I didn't get to bed until after 12. And so, yeah. Anyway. So, that's so you did basically rolled in and did a Dukes of Hazard at the airport. <laughs> oh, it was horrible. She she looked like I would just like stolen her from outside an ice cream truck. And... <laughs> Like threw her in the trunk, bonded <laughs> with her, like <laughs> it, it, it was horrible. Yeah. I mean, people looking at us like, I, I, yeah, I can't imagine what they thought. It, They're it, from it was, Kentucky. It was a rough day for airport travel uh, in the Griffith plan. Um. Okay. So what? What else we got? Okay, we've talked about the our neighbors down south or out west, whichever direction the hell they are. Um. Um. Photo ops, everybody. We're going to be talking about those a little bit after we do announcements uh, this evening. I've got some. We're going to remind you of some of our groupings we put together, but uh, they won't go on sale until after we get some things straightened out on the photo op site. In other words, the page is not ready for prime time. Um, oh. oh, that's. I understand what you're telling me now. Hi, Richard. That's who's under the Franken Conway. Oh, yeah, I, I saw. I just didn't okay. want to interrupt you all. I think uh, they said that, uh, let's see, so Richard, uh, Brett's here. I see so many people pop up on this Just Say Facebook user, so I don't know specifically who is talking when. And earlier said, uh, Christy said, she's going to be 50 this week, and there's no petering out, so you should take that back. <laughs> I'm just saying, petering out, I'm going to bring it back. Well, and also, and everybody that's going down to FrankenCon, um, that not this weekend, but next weekend, um, Christy Turner will be with me, and we're going to be celebrating her 50th birthday. So um, you should buy her a drink or a present or um, flash her or do something cool for her next weekend for her birthday. All of the above. Well, I'm going to go with option A. Uh, I didn't number the options, so you don't know. <laughs> say, you don't know I don't remember they what were. they were. I just yeah, yeah. I don't think anybody wants me to do that. Um, <laughs> yeah. Drink Sorry, Christy, uh, but you'll be happy that I just bought you a drink instead. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, yep. Yeah, she's she's giving me the laughy emojis. But um, what else? Let's see some other stuff we can talk about besides photo ops. What all have we been working on? Oh gosh. Um, 
Well, there's stuff I can't talk about that we haven't announced yet. Um, I know that, that that's where we catch ourselves like every mm. time. Like I love council meetings, but like there's a lot of stuff that we can't talk about because like this this, this is the the ultimate moment where we're we're finalizing stuff and like making a lot of moves, and this is where we really get into you know do or die zone where we know yeah. exactly what's going to happen. You know, on the entertainment side of things, um, you know, a lot of stuff is going to be at the at the convention center this year. Um, yep, versus off site, and that's uh, like party wise and things like that. I think we've we've really landed on on that. You know, being the case of, you know, Central Bank Center um, is going to be ground zero for for just about everything. Like we're still going to be able to use you know Lex Live and, and things like that for certain things and. Uh, I think it's good, but there is so much space now that like everything's done with the center, and it's so nice and it's so like it's just right there, and and I really like working with those folks, and so I, I think we, we're going to be able to bring a lot of really good stuff in there. Um, one uh, one thing that was uh, just I'm not sure who asked it, but it was a question from the chat room. Uh, I know we don't have the schedule yet, but about how often do we does the shuttle run? And I'm sure they're asking about the hotel shuttle. About how often do we try to run that through there? I saw that, um, and we're going to be going with the same model that we did last year. Uh, essentially, I think that means in peak times we're going to have three shuttles going. So about, I mean, sometimes they'll stack up, sometimes they'll get a little closer together, but about 15 minutes, I think, is um, what they were kind of doing last year. And then when it's the middle of the day, they won't be running as often, you know, as many people won't be wanting to go back to their hotels and stuff. Um, but I would say probably 30 minutes then at that point. And we'll, we'll get as much information. I mean, with something like that, what we do is we get this company and we hire the drivers and we tell them you're going, you know, this is your loop, this is your route that you're going to do. And um, they, you know, just run the loop. So it's not like at 3.15, at 3.30, at 3.45, it's, you know, we'll try yeah, to they do like, like mm -hmm. competing events down there th this year. I mean, obviously you're going to have Keeneland going, but like, um, I don't think that we're going to have a lot of problems. Yeah, and Mama Kim just commented, and she said that they were shooting for every 15 minutes, but it also just depends on what's going on downtown. Um, but luckily, right now, uh, we've got a couple of, um, I think, volleyball um, on Friday and Sunday. I think we've got a few sporting things going on in Rupp Arena, but nothing that jumped out to me that would be a really high-volume event up going on in Rupp Arena, so we might really luck out on that. And yeah, I think we've avoided, have... like, I don't think they're doing Tyler's and Tierra's on the first floor this year. Um, um they're doing, there's yeah, something. They're, def they're doing, uh, on, yeah, on Sunday, they're doing the, um, it's the youth art review that they did last year. You know how they had all those families coming in, coming in oh, on yeah, Sunday? I thought that was like, I thought that was like a, a, a toddler beauty pageant or something they had on the first floor. Was it last year that they did that? Because I'm pretty sure last year it was the the children's. It was children. It was younger kids, but I'm pretty sure it was art. I don't think it was a beauty pageant this time. Well, the big thing would be avoiding like if there's a UK oh, yeah. game, like when they yeah. You got, this right is, now, this, this is my biggest. This, this, this is the biggest piece of advice I can give anybody watching this. Uh, when you're scheduling, like you're you're working out your routine and like how you're going to travel in, uh, like look at UK basketball schedule. Yeah, we'll be posting that too. Brandon's always really good about posting that and the parking map and stuff. Yeah, yeah, you always got to watch out for the UK basketball schedule because like it gets. I mean, we've got our crowd, which is huge, and then we've got, uh, you know, the UK group, and when those things coincide, like we've not, it's it's not a like a big problem but you want to go different routes yeah if there's a uk game and so we'll post that and like where to park and all that stuff and then parking with the center is still kind of up in the air right now because they're doing this you know this, this whole thing downtown lexington um 
you know, where they were going to redo the parking, like instead of just like that flat lot. I don't think it'll hit this year. Uh, it'll probably be next year, from what I gather. But no, that that I was going to ask you about that. If we had any timetables on the Webb's little project, dude, you can't you can't get a time. It's it's city projects. Like, yeah, it, who knows when it's going to be done? It's it's like we were going to have the center that year of COVID. Uh, yeah. But, <laughs> but then, I, like, did, it, I know, just caught that up. Okay, they're going. I forget what was. How many more spaces did, did they say they were going to add? A thousand. Yeah, they're going to add a thousand spaces, and that sounds yeah. wonderful until you realize they're talking about adding like 2,000 fucking condominiums. Yeah, well, people the, are going to need a spot to like, park. They're, they're going to build up like the parking structures across the street. Right. Really, you know, build on that. And I guess that's where they're thinking most of the parking is going to come in at. But then, like, the, the other lot in the back, like, that's still up in the air. If that's going to be there in October or not, I, I don't know right now. Oh. Really. The other thing, um, I think they did their ribbon cutting ceremony today. The new hotel opened down on Manchester Street. Um, I will say, you know, if anybody's getting excited about the fact that there's a hotel right down the street, another one, um, it's a upscale hotel, a oh, boutique hotel, maybe. I think the rooms are like over $400 a night um, for a regular room. Yeah, but one of the things that's coming out in that is is that they're building a lot. There's going to be a lot more competition with downtown hotels. They're, they're supposed to expand. It's not all going to be like five star bougie kind of stuff. Um, they're adding some some what I what I read. A and, Motel Six. Yeah, well, not Motel Six, maybe, but like you know something, maybe like a, a Ramada. Uh, okay. Okay. Yeah. I mean, gotcha. Ram, Ramadas are high high class, but. They're going to be adding more options down there, which is going to be good because, like, they're what one of the things about Lexington is is that you know it's like one of the safest towns in the country, which is awesome. But they really haven't um, they have really haven't invested in downtown very much, and and that seems to be the the way that they're going now. And so, I think they're they're just going to build on it and build on it, and I think downtown will be something really special by the time it's over with. It's just where do we get caught in the crosshairs of everything? It's yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Like my, my, my guess was is that given our track record, what will happen is that they'll tear all the parking out and then they'll be building the parking structure and then we'll all have to walk in. But yeah, I, I, exactly. You, you might listen to this. That's not going to be the case. I'm just. <laughs> our luck. That's what yeah. it feels like. I'm That's being like... a negative Nancy when it comes no, to parking. I, I was just thinking about them. Uh... Uh, that that new hotel that's open down the street, and I'm gonna tell everybody that it's within walking distance. If you don't mind walking through the congregation of homeless people, that will happen once the park is done. Fair I'm sorry. Enough. I'm sorry. If you build a a park next to a homeless shelter, I'm just yeah. saying. I'm just saying. Yeah, yeah, I think yeah, that's pretty straightforward. <laughs> um. The other stuff with the center, <clears throat> I mean, I just want to remind everybody that, you know, it's 100,000 square foot on the first floor. We're going to fill that up pretty quick, looks like. And, you know, the second floor, we're going to have a lot of stuff down there. So I just want to, like, we'll, you know, we're investing in extra signage this year just to direct everybody where they're going. As of right now, photo ops will, will still be on the first floor, but if it falls in line, with like the ticket sales and it gets too big then we may have to move it down to the second floor but as of right now it's still on the first um, yeah we still have entertainment and, and some stuff going on on the main floor uh, entertainment is one of the big things that we start working on right now like are we gonna you know are we gonna bring in star cars are we gonna have um, you know what, what kind of performers are we gonna have on the floor you know, because our, our goal is to keep people engaged and entertained throughout the day. Because a convention center show is a lot different than a hotel show. You know, you don't go up to your room and then come back down. So trying to keep things engaging during the day. You know, the panels and, and all the stuff that we're doing there. I'm really excited about the panels this year. And I know we talked about that last time, but I'm super, super excited about it. And especially with the Terrifier reunion that we've got. Uh, I don't know how we're going to fit them all on a stage. Uh, that's true. We're going to have to get a bigger stage this year. Yeah, we've got a, got it. ten of them. 
I don't know if but, Joe Lewis is going to be able to wrangle all those people. Joe, what do you think? <laughs> yeah, but, 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 but the cool thing is, like, Terrifier 3, like, they, you know, they just started talking about, like, that's going to be in production, and they've got a much bigger budget, which is, you know, kind of a double-edged sword, but I, I'm really excited to see what Damien and them push out on this part three. But they're going to start filming, I think, in right after our show. Yeah. So I'm I'm curious to see what tidbits we can get out of them while while that's going on. Well, um, and uh, go ahead. Well, okay, we got to get first of all, we got to do our announcements. We got to, they're going nuts in the chat room. But I will answer a couple of questions. Yes, this our celebs we all stick over in one corner on one floor. We try basically you can go in there and and spend your day. We're just moving some of our other peripheral stuff down the yeah floor. so right now the the main floor that has all of our vendors and all of our celebrities is staying how it is going to be the downstairs will be for the film festival the speakers will have a room downstairs we'll have a classroom set up down there so we'll be announcing some um free classes that we're going to be offering at the show then we'll have a panel room and then we have a multi-purpose room, which once I can get it signed in blood from Brandon and the rest of the team, what we're going to be using that for during the day, we're going to make a, an announcement about that. But I don't want to say it and get some people's hopes up about having this and then us have to you know, use that room for something else. But um, everything that is going on downstairs, a lot of that stuff is going to be free and ticketed events going on downstairs. We will still have the vendors and all of the celebrities on one floor together. Yeah, anybody's heard me drone on about it. My biggest thing is like, I hate splitting the con floor. Yes. Absolutely hate it. And it works for some shows and I'm not saying it doesn't. For me personally, I hate splitting the con floor. I like having the, the celebrities on the same level. I like people having to maneuver through vendors to get to celebrities. Yeah. Uh, I like photo ops being right there. So, you know, we've got to make sure that like everybody's able to get a signature and and, one, and, and get their interactions and photo ops. And, and one of the best ways of doing that is just having everything concise. And we, you know, if you've got a hundred thousand square foot, I mean, that's a good size and you're talking about a lot of hotel shows that operate on, you know, 50 or 60,000 square foot. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, with our attendance and, and the amount of folks that we have come in, <coughs> I'm guessing vendor-wise, I, I, we were able to make everything work on 100,000 square foot, but like those ancillary kind of things like panels, we've tried to do it on the floor. It's it, it, There's too much noise. It was a stupid idea on my part, and I'll, I'll gladly wear that hat in addition to the stupid hat I had on now. I don't think it was a stupid idea. I think in in theory, it's really cool to be able to have them out on the floor because then more people could stop in and see them. Maybe people that didn't even know the panels were going to be going on. But yeah, there's just way too much uh, too much interference with that. All right, let, let's get these announcements out of the way. First, I want to give a shout out to sponsoring vendor Shadows of Legend, uh, Charles Romans shadowsoflegend.com if you want to hop over to his website listen to his podcast he's an author, columnist, and award winning journalist, actual journalist writes for a newspaper and everything um, decade of experience but uh, the uh, he actually interviews people and gets their story, it's not like me doing celebrities, it's he gets the, the, the weird the crypto, the ufology the ghost stories uh, he talks to the people it's um, he gets a story for you. You make your own decision. Now for celebrity announcements, we have
Sorry about that, everybody. Uh, Brandon was just telling us about our first announcement, um, and I had the sound turned off. It was somehow muted, but I did find the button, so we're back up. Okay, uh, you were saying that about uh, the the, uh, the doing the uh, sleepaway camp thing on the East Coast, and it's just not getting done. Well, I, I, I'm just surprised. Like, I haven't seen more shows do it, and like Texas had a had a great uh, sleepaway fortieth. And they, they were interested in a lot of the same folks we were. In fact, the Sleepaway folks were one of the first people that I reached out to this year. And, and Karen, like I was saying, I think just kind of brings it all home. And, and I'm really excited about that one. We've got some really good ideas uh, for the photo ops and the get together. And I think that, that panel is going to be really, really badass. And uh, of course, uh, because we've already pulled the graphic up, Greg Nicotero. Oh. Greg Nicotero is up. And that's, he's. Uh, Every makeup department since the beginning of time. That's Literally. Yeah. Day of the Dead, Walking Dead, uh, Land of the Got Dead. The Green Mile. <laughs> Are there, the dude oh, is it, a legend. stuff goes for forever and a decade. And, like, Greg has never been to our show, I don't think. No. And and I I met him out at uh, George Romero. In L.A. Star in L.A. And, I mean, super nice guy. He's, he's been to Louisville a couple of times, but he's never been to Lexington, and he hasn't been in Kentucky in, in quite some time. Um, if you if you see Day of the Dead, like he actually had an on-screen role in that, in, in addition to makeup. And then, of course, like all of his Walking Dead stuff and, and all of his work with George. I mean, if you're not excited about Greg Nicotero, you're not a fan of horror. And especially to have Greg and Tom in the same room. Oh, yeah. I mean, you know, it doesn't happen very often. I, not that I've seen, and and just that that Day of the Dead reunion. I, I'm still stoked about it. Yeah, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll preach on that until the end of time. But he's actually Greg, got some credits on my stuff too. Alita Bal- Battle Angel. And, uh, and he's got a restaurant three blocks from the yeah center. Uh, Nick and Norman. All right, let's uh, let's go on now. This is one everybody you can just shut the hell up. Yes, we are bringing. Him. James Jude Courtney. James Jude Courtney um, from the, a pile of the Halloween movies. But anyway, continue, Brandon. Oh, th- thank you, sir. <laughs> so, uh, to to the young lady, uh, the gentleman I was talking to in the in the uh, fan group tonight. Yes, Halloween announcement tonight. We we moved this up just for you, by the way. I wasn't going to announce him tonight, and then uh, you'd ask for a Halloween announcement, and I was like, what the hell? We might as well do it. Uh, Thank you for attending Scarefest for the first year, by the way. Uh, but yeah, James, you, Courtney, I've had people ask us for Halloween folks forever. Um, you know, we started talking about, you know, Sandy, and uh, then we, we, we talked about Nick and, and, you know, some others. And obviously, you know, James, you, Courtney is someone that we've not had. I, I don't think he's done a Scarefest. Nick has done a Scarefest before, but a long <laughs> time ago. And so we haven't done a Halloween anything in quite some time but i mean this is 45 and I've, i'm really excited about having him i've had people ask me about him for a very long time well and one of the things i have to say is earlier in the week well and last week too um it's very difficult for me when we're talking about guest announcements and people will comment on the post someone that we do have but haven't announced yet it is very difficult for me not to be like oh so sometimes i'll tell people like They'll be like, oh, I want uh, this announcement, another Halloween or something. I'll be like, well, you're going to be pretty excited next week or, you know, something like that. And it's killing me because, um, you know, so many times in the past when we've had people suggest guests, it's like, oh, man, me, me too. Like, I wish. Um, But there have been so many people this year that have asked for guests that we have announced or are going to announce at this point. So it is awesome. I'm I'm just gonna tell you from a from a promoter standpoint, and I know a lot of like, and, and if you know the show and you know us, I mean I think you know it's a little bit different. But like, I think a lot of people you know think of shows like, I I, I don't get I get more excited and and happier about when I when I see somebody post asking for someone that we know that we've already signed. Then yep, I get more excited about that than I do at looking at like ticket sales. Yep, because like it's it's. You know, don't get me wrong, like, you know, people are investing in the show. We have to make the best possible show that we can, and that's that's an investment on their part. Um, 
but like when you when when you're going through like social media stuff or I get a message and they're asking for somebody to come and I know that we're doing it and I know that we've got it it's really hard to bite your tongue it just makes me really happy yeah uh, when 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 our when what we're doing lines up with what a lot of the fans are are wanting wanting yeah and like we we listen to that throughout the year and you know we we work really hard on on trying to get folks you know people are asking for and this is one of those occasions that you know I, it, it really played out well i think this year and in this case i'm the mean girl because i'm the one that when you message i'll say no no <laughs> okay let's now, sometimes it's it's a little bit obtuse like it you know people get on there sometimes and they're like oh it would be so cool if you would bring this person and then some people are just like oh what the shit are you doing you need to get this guy and and you know we, we do our best. And I think I was going to say, you know, I had, I went through it earlier in the week. I don't know if someone just caught me in a bad mood, which of course I didn't say anything to them. And if you've done this, I'm probably not talking about you. Um, Cause this is just a general statement, but it really, I don't know if hurts my feelings is the right word, but when I post a guest announcement or I share a guest announcement and someone comments on it and says like, announce this person or bring this person. Um, okay. I make, we make a lot of posts talking about who do you want to see at the show? And a lot of the people that we bring look at their announcements on our social media page. And the last thing I want is for someone to get on there to look at their announcement and they see 10 people commenting that they want another person or something else. I just don't think it's very respectful and I don't like it at all. It's the, it's the guys on there. Like you, you, Look, th this is the thing about horror fans, and you can tell horror fans from like people that are just jumping on there. And horror fans are never, I've never seen a horror fan criticize another fan over their choice of movie preferences. No, I don't. They just I, don't no, do it. No, and they're, they're great. And, and I don't think anybody's doing it maliciously. They're not even mean comments. You know, um, they'll just be like, oh, you should bring this person. And I'm like, well, there's another post for that. Like, leave this post alone. Yeah, in other words, don't ask for single. celebrities on another celebrity. That's a good way to put it. That's well, just... yeah, but you, you don't like you don't talk anybody either, and like I, I see it on our page sometimes. I I see it less on our page actually than I do some others, but you'll see it on on all the convention pages. Like somebody will jump on there and yeah. Well, mm -hmm. people. Okay, uh, let's go. I'm gonna finish up uh, what we got to talk about. Let's see. The Central Kentucky Mystical Market, Lexington's premier monthly psychic and holistic event coming up June 17th and 18th. And yes, you can go there and I will be there doing my really bad tarot readings June 17th and 18th because apparently I have nothing else to do other than travel and go to the Central Kentucky Mystical Market. Uh, but it's at the uh, Clarion Hotel, Newtown Pike, uh, 17th, 18th, Central, KYMysticalMarket.com or look them up on Facebook. Let's see here. Um, you're a lot better at this than I am. Okay. Uh, so we'll when you're at the off. 45, do you want to go ahead and... We'll split. I, I got to finish this. Okay, okay. So let's go ahead and turn that off. This is why I don't produce anymore. Okay. The film festival. Film festival entries. I'm better with the mouse, though. Still uh, on the mystical market yeah. slide. Since there we the, go. The, the, the film festival. We're, we've kind of, okay, we kind of pause. We're at 66, 63 entries, and we've been there for a week or two. So I just want to tell everybody, tell your independent filmmaker friends that the Horror Film Festival is still taking entries. And uh, we still got plenty of time, but um, it's kind of hit in the 60s, and now we've kind of leveled off. But uh, that is, we're, we're, still, we're still doing that. And, of course, my own plug, if you want to see me, your host, in this cosplay honoring Sleepaway Camp, you have to go to patreon.com slash scarefestradio and uh, join that. And that way you get access to my my recovery blog, talking about my my recovery from my heart condition and, um, and my near-death experience just last week. And, uh, and I set myself on fire one day. It's just all kinds of fun on there. I mean, I'm, I'm just saying anyone with a heart condition should not be wearing such restrictive clothing. 
uh, it won't be restricted by then. Especially what they refer to commonly in the industry as huggers on, on I, the shorts area. I like, fully expect to have abs by then. That is okay, how no, dedicated no, I, I am it, to this cause. It's it's good to have goals, Wes. I'm just saying that like webs don't ma- or uh, abs don't magically like pop up. No, but and I have I, I have think a, you you've got the hair part down on, on this photo op. That's the other uh, thing. Okay, people in the chat room. Now I'm not gonna shave my beard for you, okay? Sorry. And I'm not gonna even do it down but just for men. To look the the part, should I go ahead and 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 do the just for men thing and dye my hair and my beard? I'm I wonder mean, anything worth doing is worth doing right. Well, that's kind of how I feel about it. Should not half ass yeah. cosplay, Wes. That's not the way it works. So, you gotta go so, all in, or you're all so, out. So I'm I'm thinking I'll I'll, I'll do that for uh, Saturday uh, at some point because Sunday I have to do my Wolverine, and that requires me to actually oh. shave my mustache. Now the Wolverine is good, but I'm telling you, if you're gonna pull off that that sleep away, you need to just shave. I, I I'm I'm just telling you, like don't don't half-ass it, man. Just go all in. You know, I would actually Wolverine consider now. that. I would consider that, but every time I actually shave, I catch something like the flu, and with the luck I've been having this year, that could <laughs> well, be. You it. clarified that. Me too. It, it's the flu. I catch the flu. Nothing else. Well, yeah. yeah, I mean, it's not... I don't get VD by shaving my mustache. I'm just... Yes, I will be braless. In two weeks, I will be braless. I'm actually braless tonight, by the way. Um, I think no, no one... Think, think who told me to dye it purple? That's totally out in left field. But that outfit per, fits oh, no, perfectly. Like, purple. you can see, like, the, the vest in the, or, like, the, the thing. Like, you've got to you flaunt it out there in that one. By the way, Christy Turner, as far as waxing my legs, I actually got a compliment on how smooth my legs were when I posted my, my sun tan this week. So, One I'm of them got shaved on, anyway. On the, on the converse side of that, I've shared several con rooms with Wes, and he is quite a hairy chinchilla. <laughs> yes, I, 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 I do have plenty, but... As far as the, the, what I said when uh, I was asked about my waxing my legs, I said when they did the uh, groin shave, if you tip them an extra 20, they take it off. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> so. I'm glad we always end up somewhere like this on our <laughs> council episodes. <laughs> no, okay. Um, these are how, guys, I mean, these are how normal conversations have to flow. Yeah, fair enough. It's fifty percent work, fifty percent we talk about Wes's body. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's because so much has been going on with my body. <laughs> no, but I mean, yes, even before, even before that. But I, I just, I just want. I'm going to brag a moment. I'm going to say, of course, I quit smoking in February, and then I went through cardio rehab, and now I'm a member of the wellness center, and I go in every day and work my ass off, only to watch little old men get on the treadmill for thirty minutes, going twice as fast as me. But that's not the important part. The important part is I am actually putting the effort in and, and sticking to it. And <laughs> um, and the answer to your question in the chat room, why does Scarefest TV always devolve into an ADHD sidetrack? That's what we do. That is what we do. You're welcome. Yeah, I mean, yeah. That, that's. I think you can put that mostly on me, but I think we all share a little bit of it. I, well, we it, haven't gotten it. Hey, well, also, I'm going to put this on the chat, too, because we haven't gotten any, like, we got, like, two productive, proactive questions in there, y'all. We don't script this. <laughs> I mean, like, if Brandon makes it into the room by 8.59, we are doing good. So, you know, I, I, uh, this no, is I all just... Is, yeah, that is a good point. The whole purpose of this was for people to ask questions, not yeah. for us to riff. Yeah, oh, and by, so. Another comment from the chat room. Nicole wants you to know that she is now leaving the ER. She is now leaving the ER. We don't right, know what that fine. means. She's not down there for herself. Do you all get like uh, punch cards for how often you're there? I already I am. The ER staff at this point. Yeah, yeah they, 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 they will give you punch cards and I am up to the free sandwich. I might hold out for the gas card. <laughs> but, but anyway. 
Um, okay, we got uh, we still got Bonehead to do, um, and uh, so it, uh, we'll we'll do Bonehead Weekly. Oh, I got a promo spot too. Got a promo spot. They're You're paying for this. Me. Yeah, I need to do this. Okay. Spiritmechanics.com now runs a real brick and mortar store, The Missing Elements, the one stop shop for spirit mechanics, Stevens healing vibrations and metaphysical supplies, offering books, divination, altar supplies, tarot, and art. Great selection of tarot decks, by the way. Um, and the, uh, they've added, when they moved to the new location, Stevens Healing Vibrations. Uh, Stephen Tyree, he's a vibrational sound healer who uses tuning forks and singing bowls in his practice. And for the skeptics out there, it sounds like bullshit, but I'm going to tell you, I tried it, and it fucking worked. Uh, so just say it. Don't, don't, don't mark it off just because you don't believe in it. Give it a shot. I'm actually, depending on what um, therapy finds out about my shoulder, I might just go back to him. Uh, but the, yeah, through the use of directed vibration, he's able to aid the physical body recovery and regeneration and the spiritual body in the release of energy, negative, and block blockages. Sound baths. I have, I have to ask you about that. Sound baths through uh, the use of singing bowls open the mind, allow for proper energy, flow, and repair the spirit. Anyway, Spirit Mechanics, spiritmechanics.com, like it says on there, and 1018 East New Circle Road, Suite 114. I have to find out exactly where that is. We will be going down there soon. 1018 East New Circle Road, and Bonehead Weekly. Hey there, Scarefest. This is Joe Lewis of Bonehead Weekly. I don't think you're supposed to... I don't think you're supposed to wear the shirt to the band you're going to see. So, but with weight loss, this thing finally fits and it fits nice. So I, I'm looking for black shirts. This one's called Alone and it's from 2020. It's directed by a guy named John Himes, whom I never heard of. He directed a movie called Sick and he directed several episodes of Chicago PD, Chicago Fire, Chicago blah, 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 uh, Z Nation. Is it about, and you figure it out as you go along. They don't tell you she's a recent window, widow. But she's a recent widow, and she's traveling, and she's trying to get away from her family. She doesn't want to deal with anybody. And she's basically being tracked by a killer. And once she gets to this place, well, she doesn't even kind of make it. She gets trapped. She gets away. And then she has to survive somehow, some way in the Pacific Northwest woods in the wilderness where it's just her and him. This is one of those movies that I call sparse. It's very sparse. It's a Spartan type of film. There's not a lot going on. There's really only two or three characters, two characters to be exact, Jules Wilcox and Mark Menchaca, who he played a bad guy in a series that I've talked about on here that was limited called The Outsider, based on a Stephen King story or a Stephen King novel that I loved, and I also loved the miniseries that was done. And it has a special uh, appearance, really, more almost like an extended cameo by Anthony Held, Look him up. He's in a movie called Deep Rising. Great character actor. <clears throat> the actor and actress are fine. The screenplay is, once again, just so sparse. There may be, out of this almost 100-minute movie, 95-minute movie, 20 pages of dialogue. Because most of it takes place of her coping. Is she being stalked? Is she not being stalked? What's the killer going to do? How is she going to get away? Turns out, actually, I found out doing research on this, that the actress actually broke her foot while shooting the first action scenes of the movie, and she decided to finish the shoot in the boot and with the help of her stunt double. And some of the stuff had to be shot a few months later when Jules was fully healed. Can I recommend it? Yeah, kind of. It depends on what you like. Now, if you're looking for just a taut thriller, there's some good scenes in it, and there's a great payoff at the end. I do think there's a good payoff. I think the writer and the director also give us a good payoff. But I don't know. I just couldn't connect to it. And it's not a bad movie. In fact, it's beautifully shot. Once again, most movies are now that I see. And it's very well acted. And it's, it's not, writing's not bad. And you feel a little bit for her. It's just you wished, why didn't she hit him over the head with a rock a couple more times? Or why didn't this happen? Or why? How is it so simple? And how is it? 
And it's a very simplistic story. If you're looking for something with lots of layers or a twist, this movie is not for you. There are no twists in the movie. In fact, I think one of the oddest things about this film, and, and I don't mean it as a compliment, is the twist is, is it's not really the big twist. In fact, they don't know that's the bad guy. No, he's going to kill her. Yeah, she needs to get away. This is very simplistic. This is a very sparse film. So should you see 2020s alone? I like it. I just didn't connect to it very well. I'd probably get a 6 or 7 out of 10. I don't usually do those things. But on this one, it's hard for me to just put it and qualify it in words. That's basically what I could tell you. It's probably a 6 or 7 out of 10. The, riot, riot, the rating on IMDb is like a 6 point something. It's probably right. Is it worth your time? If you have Hulu, it's on Hulu. It's not a bad hour and 40 minutes. Check it out, especially if you like women in danger films. I know there's a subset of you that do. So check it out. This has been Joe Lewis, Alone 2020. Hi, Wes. The cat is okay. Just an FYI, the cat is okay. And welcome back, everybody. We've got just a moment here. We're going to say good night. Thank you for tuning in. But we, it's right on time. We're like at the top of the hour. Uh, to answer, um, photo ops will go live this week. Uh, they, we thought we could get them done by tonight, but actually we got overzealous and we've got some posted that we do not have the eyes dotted on t's crossed etc and uh so we just we, we're, we're gonna just we think we can get that fixed pretty quick and they should begin going live now that right. will not, still not be all of them that's what i was about to say the other thing everybody needs to keep in mind is our guest announcements aren't done yet so all of our photo ops aren't going to be up either when we yeah. launch the photo ops in the next couple of days it's going to be um small portion of the total photo ops that we're going to be offering we're going to be adding groupings and adding guests so the photo op they're going to be getting updated weekly probably all the way up until right before the show so um just keep that in mind when we launch them that's not all of them yeah anybody that bought like a return of living dead cast reunion photo last year yes <laughs> it what, was that, changing. what that process looked like yeah, it was changing up until the day of. So yeah, yeah, stuff is ever changing, guys, and you know the you know the drill. But the guys at Slip Photo Ops, you can't ask for better, and they will work with you on upgrades, yes. on whatever needs to happen. Yep. And that's tonight's show, everybody. This has been Scarefest Television.